Hello, we're here at Taylor Dynamometer in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, my name is Tony. I'm the service manager at Taylor, and we're going to run through uh, removing a torsional coupling on an older DX series dyno. Uh, these torsional couplings uh, are used throughout the entire DX series, all the way from a uh, DX32 to a DX3012. There's very few differences between uh, the couplings that are used. The only difference is really the drive plate. Um, Throughout the years, a few things have, one, one thing that has changed, it is the, uh, the nut that holds the coupling on. This has a, a very old style spanner nut on it. Some of the newer units, uh, newer models, you're going to see a, uh, a large hex nut, which is a little easier to remove simply because uh, you can put a big socket on it. And I believe that uses a two and five eighths inch socket. You can put that on impact. Much easier to get off than this, uh, this style. So the first thing we're going to want to do uh, is, is knock this nut loose. And just to uh, save time, I did knock the nut loose, I'll admit to that, ahead of time. Uh, if you do need uh, the spanner wrench, that is spanner wrench measures, uh, let's see here. The spanner wrench measures, it looks like uh, two and three quarter inch. And that's something that you can get at McMaster Car. So you don't have to come to Taylor for that. You can get it just about anywhere. So we're going to knock this thing loose. As I said, I did uh, help myself to this a little bit the other day. So hopefully we can get it loose. All right. Now, there's a few tricks and a couple different ways to actually remove this coupling. Um, you can remove it as an entire assembly and then do all the work, the rebuild on it, which we're going to cover as well here. Uh, and you can do that all on the bench or you can do it when it's on the dyno. Uh, disassemble it while it's on the dyno. And I prefer to disassemble it while it's on the dyno uh, simply because it's easier to inspect and it's a little more controllable. Uh, when we put the this coupling back together, you'll see that we'll be assembling it on a bench and then uh, and then putting the assembly on the dyno. So what I've done here is I back the nut off enough to where it, it protrudes about a quarter inch beyond the uh, drive plate here of this coupling. And uh, I've got an old tool here that actually bolts up to where the drive shaft would normally bolt up. And what it does is it bridges across this nut, this, uh, this, uh, this nut. And that's why we have the nut out about a quarter inch. We're going to thread this on. This is a special tool you can probably make up uh, and have available. Because uh, these couplings should be serviced at least once a year. And it's an important, uh, it's an important part of your system. Now we're going to tighten this up. What you want to do, you can use an impact on this if you want, as long as you have enough thread engagement. Uh, and we're going to tighten that up. See, normally you're going to, you're going to snug that up pretty good. And you're going to take a hammer. If you've got a, a larger hand sledge, that's fine. And you're going to pop it one. When you do that, um, the coupling should pop loose on the shaft. Uh, in this case, it did. Uh, we're, we're lucky. Sometimes it takes a little bit more, and sometimes this method won't work, and we'll get into uh, what you do uh, if that's the case a little bit later. We can remove this, uh, this fancy tool I got here. All right. Now these couplings, when they're assembled, they do need to have, um, you, they, you can't just throw them together. There is a special way that they do go together, which we'll cover. But if you're re rebuilding a coupling, what I strongly recommend is that you get yourself a, a center punch and put a nice punch on the uh, drive plate and a matching punch on the sleeve. And then on the back side of the sleeve, Put two punches and two punches on the end plate. 
Uh, kind of pay attention to that. Make sure, make sure you punch them up good because if you do decide to repaint this, you want that, uh, that punch mark to show up. So now we're to a point where we can actually, um, we can actually remove uh, these, these bolts here and that's uh, simply a three quarter inch or half inch bolts. Okay, we've got the bolts removed. Um, now what we're gonna do is we'll use a drift and we're gonna carefully knock the drive plate off of, off of the coupling. Now, be a little bit, exercise a little bit of caution when you do this because the, the, the entire sleeve could come with, um, when you knock this off, the entire sleeve could come off with, with it. So be a little bit careful here. Also, if you haven't had one of these apart before, uh, there's, there's a series of 24 neoprene balls in here. It's nice to have a bin or something underneath because when you do take this apart, the balls have a tendency of kind of going wherever they want. So be a little bit careful there. All right, and I would recommend just working around it nice and easy. And it is coming off like it should. So I'm opening what appears to be a really big mess, um, and this is pretty normal because th this is full of grease. And what's actually happened in this case is, is the rear part of the, the coupling has come apart, which is perfectly fine, and it's going to slide back, all right? We'll kind of slide that back out of the way for now, and we're going to gently tap. And there's some of the neoprene balls I was talking about. everything's full of grease but you see there's 24 in there and it's, it is a bit of a mess so if you can collect that uh, with a bin or something underneath that's helpful. Uh, we're to a point now where we can do one of two things. We can either separate the sleeve uh, from the end plate or we can actually because we know this this uh, this hub here is loose on the shaft we can pull that off and I'm going to choose to pull the hub off of the shaft now so Grab our scanner, and if you notice, I left this nut on. I like to leave this nut on until the very end, simply because it is a tapered shaft. We don't want the thing to slide off accidentally and drop on your foot or something. Okay, so now we're going to carefully pull this hub off. Now it is a little bit heavy, so uh, be careful. Uh, and it is the uh, it's full of uh, grease as well. All the more reason to be careful. So we're going to slide that off. We'll put that off to the side for now. And then we've got the remainder of the neoprene balls in this outer the sleeve with the uh, with the end plate on it. And we're going to pull that off and set that over here as well. Now the only thing that's holding these two pieces together is a press fit. So uh, once we get it off, we can we can uh, set it up on end and bump it with a, a mallet a few times, and I'm sure it'll come apart. Now, when you do take it apart, you'll see the neoprene balls in here again, and they're round to begin with, and you can see these are are pretty well used up because they are uh, actually oval. 
got a flat spot on them. And that's what does all the work and does all the, absorbs all the, the vibration that uh, saves your drive line. It's the reason for this, this whole, uh, this coupling. That's what it's supposed to do. So what we're gonna do next is, uh, yeah, I'll take a hammer and I'll knock this back plate off. And then uh, we'll get it over into the parts cleaner. We'll get everything cleaned up. And uh, we can go over some part numbers and uh, show you what's, what's all needed to rebuild this coupling and make it look like new. And uh, we'll put her back together and, and uh, we'll be back in business.